Assalamualaikum and a very good day to everyone. So I am Nor Azi Effendi Lee and I am going to present on the differentiation in ESL writing assessment practices in two uh, Malaysian schools. So the background here is this study set in the Malaysian context where educational reform planning by the Ministry of Education is structured via the Malaysian Education Blueprint. And this blueprint aims to provide equal and flexible education for Malaysian learners who are diverse in cultural and learning backgrounds in order to make, minimize their achievement differences. So differentiated assessment, what is that? Uh, it is an approach that allows teachers via a variety of techniques and tools to form opportunities for their academically diverse learners to realistically demonstrate their learning and progress during the course of their learning time. So however, when it comes to Malaysian educational practices in general, classroom assessments are still based on one fit size fits all norms as students, regardless of their differing background knowledge, are still required to achieve the same learning outcomes. So. Um, one of the underlying factors that impedes students with mixed abilities from mastering the, speak, the writing skill is the use of undifferentiated or conventional approach of instruction assessment, which does not always help them to construct knowledge. So the differentiation approach makes it workable for learners with different levels of ability in the classroom to obtain the suitable learning opportunities based on their personal levels of ability. So here, uh, Suprayogi actually come out with five dimensions of differentiated instruction, which are to cope with student diversity, adopt uh, specific teaching strategies, evokes a variety of learning activities to monitor individual learning uh, student needs and leads to optimal learning outcomes. And then uh, Nish Kalo et al. Uh, stated that it is a way to increase efficiency of education process. It is a form and means of teaching individualization, academic principle that takes account uh, typological features of students. Um, it uses a system of, uh, of instruction based on differentiation. It can be a way to organize individual learning uh, that takes into account the interests and aptitudes of students and finally it can ensure maximum productive educational and cognitive activity from students. So uh, based on past research, okay, um, most research focus on perceptions when it comes to differentiation approach or strategies. So Ramli and Yusuf here uh, focus on perceptions as Suprayogi stated that there's no distinction in teaching experience with practice meaning even though uh, there are uh, if even if the teacher has more experience it does not mean that the I would call, uh, the strategy is better. Okay. So when it comes to implementation studies, uh, implementation on instruction, differentiation in instruction, Zani says that most of the implementation are more reactive than pro uh, proactive, meaning they react to the students' uh, what are called needs and wants rather than they proactively uh, construct a strategy uh, before they teach the students. And Anish Kalo et al. stated that, that uh, most teachers, when it comes to implementation of differentiation instructions, they are not coordinated, meaning they lack of strategy when they do differentiation. Studies in Malaysia stated that uh, when it comes to teachers' perception, uh, it's good, but there's still lack of strategy when it comes to differentiation approach. And then Kao et al. in 2018 stated that there's problems in implementing differentiation approach due to the lack of support from other stakeholders, for example, uh, other staff, uh, the authorities, uh, what we call the parents and the students as well. When it comes to writing, uh, past study based on writing on differentiation approach, Maya and Toba stated that uh, most teachers and students' perception on differentiation instructions are positive. Uh, and same goes with Ismail. In Malaysia, most of the students' perceptions of this approach as positive approach and it benefits writing. Okay, it benefits, hence why this approach is suitable for teaching writing. So the problem statement in my study is in the differentiated approach, uh, differentiated instruction and assessment should be practiced hand in hand. Um, the education, uh, Malaysian education introduces differentiated instruction strategies for teachers. However, differentiated assessment strategies uh, is lacking when it comes to the blueprint. So this can result in teachers falling back to standardized summative testing in order to teach their students learning at the end, ignoring classroom work that has been accumulated over the course of an academic year. So according to Ismail, many Malaysian teachers find issue in the teaching of writing skills because of the diversified learning needs of their students. So with the introduction of the differentiation approach, there is an assumption that all teachers will follow the guidelines 
that aligns with differentiated instruction and conduct their own differentiated assessment based on their students' needs. So hence, it is imperative to identify and compare the differentiated assessment strategies practiced by teachers and challenges faced by them when implementing this approach, especially during classroom writing. Okay, so the research objectives are to compare the differentiation strategies used by ESL teachers in their writing assessment practice in two different schools to identify challenges faced by them when doing this assessment. So uh, methodology is uh, uh, we actually gave an open-ended survey questions on uh, the use of differentiated strategies in writing to four different respondents, all female English secondary school teachers. So two from uh, what are called SMTK and two from SMAKA. Okay, two from SMKA. So these are the findings. So we can see that there are different in ages, uh, years of experience, even CIFA level, but most of them, the frequency of attending workshop twice per year. Okay. So um, all of them are aware of the syllabus, okay, as well as the implementation. They implement the syllabus in the classroom, and for in when it comes to perception, majority of them, uh, what I call, say it is partially effective. But all of them say uh, differentiation strategies or methods are uh, useful and important. So, so uh, what I call those of them who say partially effective are because they think they can see that some students show progress, okay, when they use this differentiation approach, but some don't. So when it comes to frequency of writing assessment, uh, they vary, uh, each respondent vary. One says weekly, they did it weekly. Uh, respondent B said N of each skill, C is every chapter, and then D is two lessons per month. And then when it comes to strategies, different uh, teachers have different strategies. So A have mind mapping, use mind mapping and writing short paragraphs in class. B use outlining and brainstorming. C and D from the same school, they actually use entry exit ticket. And then D also use think picture. So when it comes to using their own unique assessment method, apart from what they uh, what they got from the syllabus or the textbook, only respondent A use oral construction and peers questioning, while the other three, they actually follow the rubric or the textbook. When it comes to post-assessment methods, after the assessment, the writing assignment, respondent A uh, discuss the results in the class, B use, uh, give feedback via the system itself that is being used by the school, C and D use follow-up tasks. So you can see that there is a similarity in the same school. Okay, but for A and B who are from the same school, they have a bit different when it comes to their practice. So when it comes to challenges, so uh, most of them say limited time. And then another challenge they face is for, uh, from the students. Uh, lack of time preparation by students by respondent A. Uh, lack of prior knowledge by students, meaning students don't know what they are going to do or don't have the knowledge before they do the task by respondent B. Different pacing by students, meaning different students, maybe some students finish earlier, some students finish later. So it's very difficult for a teacher to actually handle this variety of time, uh, time pacing in the class. Okay, and then respondent B says confusion by student because differentiation is uh, strategies uh, consists of like you give different instructions to different kind of students based on their needs and preferences. So students get confused because of these multiple instructions. Okay, so the suggestion by respondents are curriculum needs to be less exam oriented, provide authentic Malaysian context as example and give more time to teach per lesson. Okay, and so although teachers cognitively understand every strategy and method in the implementation, uh, they may not translate this knowledge into their classroom teaching practices. As you can see from the findings, uh, some uh, teachers have difficulty to do this differentiation method. And then teachers feel less positive in adapting their teaching practices due to lack of planning, uh, inadequate time, blocks, and other things. Okay, so this can be seen in the findings as well. So in conclusion, the implementation uh, requires major changes of uh, teaching practice and curriculum design, uh, which include time and careful planning. And uh, the important part is teachers' mastery and readiness for its quality. So teachers are the implementators of this uh, curriculum. So we need to focus on 
getting the teachers to make sure the strategies are correct. So teachers should have that understanding of differentiation strategy in order to adopt the approach in their classroom with minimal challenges. So it is uh, if differentiated assessment practice are viewed as practical difficulties rather than benefits, uh, all stakeholders must understand which specific procedures are considered problematic in order to design more appropriate professional development programs. And by that, I end with thank you for listening. So that is all. Thank you.